And make no mistake, whether it's in Southport, London, or Hartlepool, these people are showing our country exactly who they are. Mosques targeted because they're mosques. Flares thrown at the statue of Winston Churchill, a Nazi salute at the Cenotaph. And so I've just held a meeting with senior police and law enforcement leaders where we resolved to show who we are, a country that will not allow understandable fear to curdle into division and hate in our communities, and that will not permit under any circumstances a breakdown in law and order on our streets. Because let's be very clear about this. It's not protest. It's not legitimate. It's crime, violent disorder. I can announce today that following this meeting, we will establish a national capability across police forces to tackle violent disorder. These thugs are mobile. They move from community to community. And we must have a policing response that can do the same. Shared intelligence, wider deployment of facial recognition technology, and preventative action, criminal behaviour orders to restrict their movements before they can even board a train. Okay, so there you have it. Stasi Starmer has declared war on the working class. Yep, Stasi Starmer has declared war on the working class. So this is it. This evening he's declared war on the working class, effectively saying you have no right of protest about these events. For me, this is very serious. This is, this is a, like a declaration of war. It's saying that you cannot protest about what is happening. In my last video, I explained that more people, more British people, have been killed by a certain demographic within this country than all of the soldiers and military people of the two Gulf Wars. It's a fact. But we are in an environment where British generals are sort of proclaiming that we might need to introduce conscription. We need to get the British army ready for a, an, an illusionary enemy, which is outside. The enemy is inside, as far as I'm concerned. The enemy is changing British culture on a monthly basis. And uh, the rest of um, uh, British society is basically told to put up and shut up. That That is the reality of it. If you go out and you practice uh, and, and you protest, you are immediately labelled far right. And what is far right, by the way? Well, if you notice how the mainstream media all singing from the same hymn sheet, the EDL, you know, uh, Youssef from Scotland has recommended that the EDL be listed as a prescribed terrorist organisation. On what grounds? On what grounds? And then you had like the Times, Telegraph, all mentioning about the EDL and EDL activities. Everybody knows that the EDL was disbanded 10 years ago. So who and why is pushing it? Whoever's pushing that narrative are out of date on their intelligence. But it tells you that they've got a playbook which they're working on. And it doesn't really matter what the reality is out on the ground. Yeah, it is a playbook. We all know that the blasphemy laws are coming in and they're going to come in thick and fast. Starmer has quite openly said, oh, because of the writing on the street, yeah, we now need to introduce facial recognition technology. It's always the same in these situations, isn't it? It's always the same. Let's look at Southport, okay? Southport, that tragedy, with those three girls being killed, yeah, and uh, about eight others uh, injured, severely injured with knife wounds, girls and, and some staff, okay? There was protests about it, disquiet amongst the communities, yeah? This is what the um, Labour and the politicians call writing ethnic uh, writers, call them communities, yeah? If it's Indigenous or uh, proud British people, then it's far right, Yeah? There's great distinction, communities or far right, yeah? 
they label working class people who dare to voice as far right extremists. It's a joke. It's an absolute joke. Now that tragedy in Southport, yeah, it was seen that a chap who looked Asian was walking to the vigil with a machete. There were photographs of him being arrested. However, prior to that arrest, rumor control has it that he was trying to escape to a mosque. That was why the focus and the rioting happened around the mosque, because it was said that he had uh, tried to escape in the mosque. He was arrested. We have not heard anything about the arrest of this individual since, okay, which has caused that riot. And the police haven't released any information or haven't even confirmed. It's just like some vacuum that these riots came out of nowhere, nowhere. Something tells me, you know, if, if, if I wasn't such, I don't know, open-minded, I would, I would think that probably it was scripted. Probably this guy, it was just rumour control, but this guy was planted there with a so-called machete to stir up and stoke up trouble by the powers that be, because that's how it looks like. There's no, heard nothing about it. You know, was a man arrested in Stockport carrying a machete prior to the riots? Did that man go to the mosque? as a means of escape or sanctuary, sanctuary, yeah? Can the police confirm that, yeah? We need that. Yeah, this whole stuff escalated, as the judge quite rightly said, because it uh, they, they didn't release the name of the individual and it created a vacuum. And in that vacuum, all sorts of stuff was swelling around. That's what happens when you create vacuums. No mention has been, nothing's been mentioned about the Lieutenant Colonel who was stabbed viciously last week. Uh, the uh, two people who viciously, these bugs, as Keir Starmer, see, Keir Starmer didn't call those guys who uh, who broke the police uh, uh, woman's nose last week at Manchester Airport and put the other two uh, policemen in hospital, did not call them thugs. Yeah, it was talking about being calm. And the only person who got the wrap around the numbers and got car carpeted was the police officer who was trying to defend himself and kicked the guy, yeah, in a very stressful situation. Yeah, that was the only person. There's no talk about those people getting arrest, arrested for punching coppers on the nose and, and, and putting them in hospital. Yeah, we have this situation in Downing Street where they were kettling, yeah, uh, individuals. Now, I'm old enough to remember uh, Ian Tomlinson, yeah, Ian Tomlinson, he was a guy who was a victim of police kettling at the uh, Occupy Wall Street uh, protests in the city of London back in, I think it was 2008, 2009, where he was just walking on his merry, merrily way and the police officer decided that they were going to push him into the kettling and he hit his head on the pavement and he died. No policemen were ever prosecuted for that murder. None. Yeah. And they used the same tactics last night whereby they deliberately kettled people in and arrested them one by one. Okay, so that, that's all I want to sort of mention, really, is to me, Keir Starmer's broadcast was simply a declaration of war. To say, working class, shut up, stay in your lane. Things are happening here and you've got nothing to do. No right of protest. No right whatsoever. It's very, very concerning, very concerning indeed. And every, all of them, LBC, Times, Telegraph, Guardian, of course, all coming up with the same narrative. It's the EDL. What are talking about the EDL? What, that's the nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Okay, that's it. That's all I've got to say about that matter. Yeah, just, you know, watch and shoot, watch and shoot. Watch your back, guys, because... This is an organised thing. This is this is something which has been engineered and orchestrated, in my opinion. In my opinion, it's engineered and orchestrated. And the more you try to say and protest, you know, four million people voted for reform. Reform gets four, maybe five seats in Parliament. The biggest thing what you can do, the biggest thing, and I cannot stress this enough, you need to get wise to the idea, is to get proportional representation in place. That's the only way you're going to get free of this situation. Because trust me, 
think if you think things were bad under the, the, these Tories, the terrible Tories, uh, things are going to get a whole lot worse under uh, Stasi Starmer's uh, regime. It's going to get a whole lot worse. Your number one priority, in my opinion, is to push for for first past the post, so you can get proper representation, proper representation on the political spectrum. Because at this moment in time, your voice, yeah, your voice, is not being heard, and it doesn't matter how much you want to go on the street and protest about it, you will be labelled as far right extremist. In the meantime, as you probably noticed, in the media. There was um, some type of a rally which was not organised. It wasn't in TfL and it was down the middle of Regent Street. No problem. Please have no problem about it. They weren't in riot gears as that was going down. Yeah. And you could bet your bottom dollar that if a guy wanted to walk down that, that street with a Union Jack, he would have been whisked, whisked off like nobody's business. OK, that's it, guys. Over and out. And by the way, if you do like any of my posts, much appreciate if you sort of just, you know, like subscribe and share my posts.